Hello, everybody. My name is Eric, and I'm here with a new co-owner of Gun Gamers Productions. Who's that? Lane. Uh, so I'm here to talk about our automatic rifleman class, what it is, what's allowed, and why we wrote the class this way, and what you can do to have the best time when playing with it at Gun Gamers Productions events. So the Automatic Rifleman class is unique to Gun Gamers Productions, and we like this class because it gives you a step up in firepower without having to commit to an entire box-fed light machine gun. Yes, it allows you to have that in-between ground covered of, you know, something like an M249 saw versus something like an RPK like we have here. This is definitely a little bit lighter and handier than most other saw options, but it also is reinforced and built for sustained automatic fire. Uh, you can actually tell very obviously that this was designed from the ground up to be a squad support weapon, but they're not frequently used with drum magazines in the real world because drum magazines are generally not very good and in airsoft that also kind of holds yeah. true. Unless you're gonna spend as much as the actual rifle on the drum magazine, it's probably not going to be that great. The other thing about creating this class is it allows people to use airsoft guns that aren't allowed or really built into the rule set at a lot of other large-scale games. So we've got some examples here on the table to give you some inspiration on what you can do for the automatic rifleman class. And one of them that we get a lot of questions about is the Shrike style or M4 conversions. Yes, so with a Shrike or a belt-fed M4 conversion style of gun, the issue is that when you're trying to build a spirit of the game type of rule set that goes for immersion and grounding the combat system in a level of realism that makes it feel more engaging, in my opinion, and in yeah. the opinion of a lot of our players, you want to have machine guns act like machine guns, and when those machine guns act like machine guns, they should be machine guns that have been proven and used in the real world. The Shrike system, while very cool and sold commercially in the United States, really has not shown up with any militaries around the world, and that's why we count it under the IAR class, especially because, you know, as you get these from the factory, a lot of them have a lot of different configurations to the point where none of them are really military spec. But we have actually an example here from Gun Gamer staff member Corey, and he built this to be a very spirit of the game type of infantry automatic rifle configuration of the Shrike, and I personally think this looks incredible. Yeah, it is definitely my, my favorite one that I've ever seen, and it's built out to fill this role specifically. I, I really like this, and it, no matter what platform you're gonna be working on, in our rule set, there are a couple of things that you need to consider when building something out for this class. So it needs to be some sort of rifle that is built for the purpose of sustained fire whether it be the Shrike, whether it be the RPK, it needs to be designed for that. Yeah, so another example would be the M27 IAR, or there would also be something like, honestly, the Browning automatic rifle that you saw in World War II. That would count as an automatic rifle for the Gun Gamers Productions rule set. Or the, uh, the Bren, the top. Yeah, the Bren would also count. would work as well. So the main thing that you're gonna see for those specifications are going to revolve around barrel length, being the specific type of rifle, and they also need to have a bipod on them. Now the bipod does not need to be from the factory, like this RPK one. You can have something that is attached to either the barrel, attached to your handguard, rail system, those will work. We do have an example here of something that does not qualify, even though it meets a lot of specs, and that is this AK-74N. It has a long yes. enough barrel, it has a stock on it, it has the bipod. However, this was not designed for sustained automatic fire, so it doesn't meet that requirement, and you couldn't use something like this or an M16A2 for the automatic rifle class. Yes, and I want to talk about why that matters. Why it matters for Gun Gamers Productions and for what we do here is that we are going for a grounded type of semi-realistic play. It takes place in a fictional universe, it takes place within a whole range of parameters parameters that we set, but you ground the aesthetic and you ground the style of the game when you dictate a little bit more, you know, what meets certain weapons rules. And when you have somebody who put the effort in to make a very convincing looking IAR, having something that doesn't look like what it looks like 
just creates confusion, or excuse me, doesn't look like what it wants to be, creates confusion of, well, why can't I just go full auto with my standard AK? We really want there to be a visual distinction of when someone looks at the airsoft gun that's being used, they understand why that rifleman is allowed to go full auto. Yeah, it definitely helps from a glance to be able to look at somebody and be like, they're the automatic rifleman class. They are the CQB specialist class. Whatever specialty role you may fill on the airsoft field, being able to quickly look at it from a glance not only helps us as staff, but helps players as well understand what their role is on the field. Yeah. And overall, I mean, there's still a lot of flexibility, like you were saying earlier, the M27, the BAR, the Shrike, the RPK, the RPK-16. There's a lot of different options out there for the sustained fire guns that will feed off of your traditional mid-cap style magazines. There's a really lot out there, and I'm really excited to see how people use this class in the future. Well, one of the things I think the class could be very useful for that we'll see more and more as we you know go to more and more different facilities is you have that ability to go full auto outdoors, but you're still at a standard energy limit and you have a selector switch. That's actually a big power yeah. boost for the automatic rifle class because we don't allow full auto indoors. It's, you know, we try to be a little bit of a kinder, gentler game in that way. And when you have that rule, that means that, okay, now LMGs can't clear buildings. Great. Now back, you, back, yeah. yeah, this can clear buildings. So you're telling me that you have a Shrike with a 250 round EPM-1. Yeah, you've got a lot of firepower both in and outside of buildings now. You, you've got a little bit longer barrel than probably the riflemen that are in your squad, but you have the ability to move through rooms just like them. You still also have access to frag grenades, so it makes you be a lot more utilitarian in those kind of close quarters or indoor scenarios versus the LMG that's going to have to, you know, switch to their pistol or stay outside because they can't make engagements inside in full auto. Yeah, LMGs that do have a selector switch are technically allowed to go semi-auto, but that's like a single digit number of guns. Yeah, it is very few and far between. But overall, we hope that this was helpful to understanding the automatic rifleman class at Gun Gamers Productions. We didn't get to go over absolutely everything with the class, but if you want to learn more about it, you can read our rule set on our website at Gun Gamers productions.com it's right down here on screen in the description as well for you to check out but thank you so much for watching today's video if you want to see more videos about gun gamers productions and the events that we hold you can click on the video that is right underneath eric or if you just want to see another video from our channel you can click on the video underneath me but my name is Ben lane i've been eric and we will see you all next time peace